My name is Herbert J. Werner, W-E-R-N-E-R. -E I have a, an AKA, which is a nickname, Fritz, which is German nickname, okay? And I was born in New York City. I was raised in an orphanage uh, called Father Flanagan's Boys Home, Boys Town, Nebraska. And from there, I went into the United States Marine Corps, which in reality was another orphanage. And, and, and this was the year 1948. And for two years, I, uh, I worked in the division headquarters as a messenger runner. And then when the Korean War started uh, in July of 1950, uh, I went to Korea on the USS uh, George Clymer, and I was the chief of staff of the brigade uh, messenger and runner. And uh, I would be with him every day, and every day while we were at the, on the Pusan perimeter, he would be on the line. So I got to see the entire area of the Pusan perimeter from A to Z. And as far as combat experiences are concerned, I have the same stories as everybody else. But what impacted me as a young 18 year, 19 year older was the war itself, the first time participation in a war and the first time under fire, the first time seeing wounded uh, people, which were Korean soldiers to include civilians. Uh, very uh, impressive, uh, impacted me. I can see it like it was yesterday. And uh, that was my first taste of war and the first taste of fear, being afraid, and uh, very educational. And what really impacted me was the, not so much the war itself, but the results of war, the refugees fleeing and the fear in their eyes and uh, uh, the children uh, carrying their belongings, which were minimal and, you know, running for their lives. And I saw that every day, and that stayed with me to this day. It gets kind of emotional. Okay, I'm sorry. But that's it, you know. Other than that, uh, uh, I remember uh, when the brigade was integrated into the 1st Marine Division, and we made the Incheon landing. Guamido, Incheon, Seoul, I remember that. Uh, the combat, again, the, the refugees, you know. And being an orphan, to the chosen reservoir. Up there it was worse because of the snow, the weather. Uh, uh, the Korean refugees, hardly any clothes on the kids with these rubber type shoes. Amazing, really amazing. And then when we finally got out and evacuated down in Ham Hung Nam, uh, the refugees were fighting to get on the with each other to get on the ships, and you couldn't help them, you know. And so that that really, that portion, very emotional for me. Okay. Uh, other than that, I've been to Korea two tours during the war, 1950 to 1951, and then I went back over. I re-enlisted to go back over because I, I made the Marine Corps career. 
and died. Uh, I stayed 52, I stayed until after the war. Uh, I got to meet uh, in 1950, uh, when we came out of the reservoir and got to Masan, uh, I got to see and meet uh, uh, Sigmund Reed, the president, and his Austrian wife. Yeah, the uh, colonel that who, I was a messenger, he introduced me. So that was a, a real thrill for me, because yeah, we, we all knew who he was. Uh, I've been to Korea on a third tour. I was the first uh, Marine advisor to the Korean Marine Corps recruit training, their rifle range, and their infantry training. Uh, down at Chin Hei, Korea, where the Naval Academy is. That was the Marine Corps boot camp then. And I was there for about a year, and very, uh, very educational for me. I was the first advisor, and uh, uh, I really worked with them. I enjoyed it. And uh, uh, what I would do on weekends with the Korean driver, we would go out in the countryside, and uh, when they were planting rice, I used to get out there and plant rice. I, I kind of, you know, mingled, and the Korean families and the farmers would feed me. So I, I had a lot of fun, you know. So, and we, uh, all the advisors uh, did a lot of hunting in those days. This is 1952, 50, let's see. Oh, God, I, I 1961 or, 1960, I'm not sure about the dates, but uh, we, we did a lot of hunting and we would uh, uh, fill up the jeep trailers with geese, Canadian geese, and we delivered to the orphanages and uh, that used to be a real, real grand thing, so I, 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 I like that. Uh, as a uh, as a non-Marine, uh, what I do, I officiate professional boxing. And I've been to Korea, I think, four times. And uh, I got the referee uh, a world championship fight. Uh, uh, at, in 1988, the uh, champion, the uh, Super middleweight champion, boxer champion, was a guy named uh, Chung Park, and he was a champion. And he fought in the city. I can't think of the name of the city, but they make cars in that city. Oh. Uh, oh. He had his first defense of his world championship fight, and he won. I refereed the fight, and then I was over there three other times. I did a fight. A, a, a title fight in uh, Incheon, and two more uh, I judged, the one in Incheon and two in Seoul, and refereed one. But I can't, I can't think of the name of the city where they make the cars, Chenju or something like that. I'm not, I'm not positive. Yeah. So I, I got to love Korea because I have almost Three years out of my life I've spent over there, okay? And I marvel at the resilience of the Korean people. And this is no BS, this is the truth. And I can't get over seeing that country when it was nothing, nothing but war torn, and how built up every trip I made how things improved, okay? And that to me was real amazing. And uh, the other thing that really impacted was the patriotism, okay? It seems like the Koreans, from the time they exit the womb, they're taught about the history of their country and and it's and, and 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 the patriots, and once they find out that you are a Korean veteran, the respect you you 
he received it just out of this world. It's awesome. Okay, and uh, like all the times I went over there to do a uh, to officiate a boxing uh, event, uh, the, uh, the the Korean supervisor would always, you know, get a hold of me, and we'd go out to dinner, and there'd be like a couple of friends of his or doctors and stuff, and they would ask me where I've been in Korea and so forth, and, and uh, I've been to some places in Korea that they've never been to, you know. So on the second trip, I went over there, he got me, he bought a, a map of Korea, and he made me X out all the places that I went, and, uh, and that, you know, added to the conversation. Really hilarious and a lot of fun and interesting, but uh, the treatment that I got over there was just awesome. I, I loved it, and it's it's more or less my second country when you get right down to it. And I'm I'm very sincere about this. It's not BS because of being over there initially as a young 18 year older, and then the other tours that I've had. So uh, anyway. That's, that's about it. So last time you were in Korea was in the late 80s? Uh, Jesus, I, 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 I refereed one and then following that, I, I'd have to check my fight records. Uh, if you go into boxrec.com and go into officials and you look up my name, I, I, I did four world championship fights and they're, they're listed in there. I have it at home, but uh, I, I don't remember the dates or anything like that. Yeah. Because in my opinion, actually I think people would agree, Korea now is also again more different from the 80s. Oh yeah, oh yeah, without question. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's superb, I mean it's like being in the United States. Uh, in some cases, some of the cities look better, to tell you the truth. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm amazed, really. Uh, it's fascinating, really. Yeah. Were, you were you wounded at all while you were Oh, yeah. I, I was wounded in, uh, when I first went over there and the, and the, and the second time. And then uh, I was wounded in Vietnam, yeah, because I made the Marine Corps career. I put a total of 37 years in the Marine Corps, and uh, I was 22 years enlisted. And my uh, highest rank was uh, Master Gunnery Sergeant, and then when Vietnam uh, broke out, uh, I, uh, I got a temporary commission, and then a year later they made me a permanent officer. So I was an officer for 15 years and retired a major. So, and then. Uh, when I became a civilian, I went to work uh, for the uh, California State Prison System as a uh, production manager. Yeah. What made you first enlist in the Marine Corps? Well, it, it kind of uh, unusual. It's 1948. I'm in an orphanage, and uh, it was two weeks before graduation. They had all the pictures done, and the diplomas were all tight, and one of my classmates, I was laying behind this building and uh, on the grass, thinking about what I was going to do. And my buddy came up to me, he says, uh, Herbie, uh, you know what I did yesterday? I said, what'd you do? He says, I joined the Marine Corps. And I looked up at him and I says, uh, you think they'll take me? He says, I don't know, let's go find out. And I went with him down to Omaha, Nebraska, and we talked to the recruiting sergeant, and got sworn in, and that afternoon at 3 o'clock, we were uh, put on a train to San Diego recruit depot. <laughs> Just like that? Just like that. So anyway, the. Uh, uh, both of us did not have a uh, positive reputation when we left, you know, because we didn't tell anybody. And we didn't have permission to leave, yet our diplomas were already done and everything, you know. And, uh, the mo money was set aside that we earned, you know, that 
we were going to get uh, to be thrown out into the world. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, it was 1948. And you were, you said 18 years old? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. Anyone that's here at this reunion, do you remember them from when you were in Korea serving? No, no. I, uh, I have not run in all these years, run into anybody that I served with, to tell you the truth. There is one fella that uh, Mary found on, on the roster that was in the same unit, and we're going to talk to him and find out. And we're going to take it from there. But uh, everybody now, I got more friends in the cemetery than I do on the right side of the grass, so when you get right down to it. But uh, I, even, uh, even my unit in, uh, in Vietnam, I've only run into the guys that were career Marines, but not the, uh, not the ones that got out, with the exception of, uh, of three guys, okay? Uh, one is a, an alterman in Chicago who I put in for a, uh, a decoration and he received it. And I went back there and we presented it in, in, in city, at the city hall with the mayor, the whole thing, nice ceremony. And there's another one, two of them in Philadelphia. And uh, those are the only outsiders other than the career Marines that I knew that were over there. Mm -hmm. So uh, running into uh, a guy that was in the same unit as me in Korea, very rare, very rare, yeah. What was your unit again? Okay, I was in headquarters company of the 1st Marine Brigade. That was, that's the first uh, Marine organization that went to Korea the 2nd of August of 1950 that fought in the Pusan perimeter. And then when the 1st Marine Division uh, came over to make the Incheon landing, we joined them and then we uh, integrated into Headquarters Company, Headquarters Battalion, 1st Marine Division. And I worked in the adjutant section and I was the messenger. So, sort of, you know, pushing around doing a multitude of jobs. Mm -hmm. But uh, the combat experiences uh, in the Chosen Reservoir, we were on the perimeter, I had to go on patrols. I had to, at one time I was told to organize a division morgue uh, because the greater registration people weren't up there. Uh, I, and that was a real eye opener for, for me and I still see it. And I have, you know, flashbacks on that. I think about that often. And when I do go to church, I always think about it, you know. And uh, anyway, same old, same old, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, the big thing was, uh, you know, the progression of, 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 of the country, you know, seeing it more torn. And then, you know, how they, how they improved and so forth. Yeah. So anyway, that's about it. Unless you got some questions. Yeah. When when did you say you retired from the from the Marine Corps? Okay, yeah. I joined the Marine Corps in nineteen forty eight, and I retired in May of nineteen eighty five. Eighty five. Yeah. Okay. So you were in Korea and Vietnam. Yes. Mm. What does what does the Korean War mean to you in your for you in your life? Well, you know, prior to the Korean War, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy, very athletic, you know, and I was in this orphanage during World War II, and the guys that were, were at the orphanage that served in World War II, came back, you know, and you hear their stories and stuff like that. And so, you know, the Marine Corps was entrenched, okay, and then I joined the Marine Corps. And then, uh, 
The Korean War started, though, you know. The ex I, when I first joined the Marine Corps, the big thing in those days was to go to China, to be a China Marine, serving China. And I wanted that, you know. And lo and behold, you know, 1949 came around and uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, Nazi Tung kicked all the, all the Americans out of China and here they came to Pendleton, you know. And, and then finally 1950 rolls around in July, you know, and there's talk about the war and everybody is excited, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, hot to trot, so to speak, you know. They're going to get in the action, going to, you know, do what a Marine does, you know. <laughs> and uh, anyway, yeah, uh, you know, it, we're, we're, they put us on a convoy down here to San Diego. They got the band playing. We're boarding ship and on the way to Korea. And we're trying to find all these World War II guys that have been in combat before. What's it like, you know, and so forth. It's very exciting, though. To answer your question, I can't answer. Just, you know, just, the, just like in every war throughout the world, there's excitement when it starts, but when you're into it, it's a different story. It's heartbreaking. It's lousy. You, you understand what I'm saying? Okay. But uh, uh, some of the things I've seen are really, really bad, really bad. And the kids, the kids suffer. The women, oh, it's amazing. It kills me. That's, I get very emotional about this. It's bad, I know. I should I hope you're not filming that crap. But anyway, that's it. What's the next question? Have you been coming to the Chosen Fee reunion for many years? No, I just once, once in a while, you know. Uh, I, 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 being in a, a career Marine, I. Uh, I got unit reunions, right. and uh, they have you know reunions. And I go to them, but, and when you go to these type of reunions, you hear the same old stable, you know. And, uh, I, I keep looking for guys I know, and uh, when I go to chosen few, I normally my chapter guys, you know, those are the guys I talk to. And, uh, uh, yeah, I wanted to ask since you, yeah, like you were in the Vietnam War as well. So I, I thought maybe you had many different organizations and veteran groups that you are a part of. I wanted to ask, is there something kind of different about the, the Chosen Few Brotherhood? Well, there is a big difference, okay, uh, because of what actually happened. Uh, you got to picture yourself, you know, you're, you're in the mountains, and it's cold, and the clothes you're wearing, it, you know, it, it, it's not sufficient, you know. And you're talking to people, their teeth are chattering from the cold, you, you, you can't go to the bathroom because you got maybe two sets of underwear, two pair of trousers on, and... Uh, uh, you don't know when you're going to get a warm meal, and you're looking at everybody else, and they look just like you do, you know, and uh, the brotherhood begins because of it, because when I look at you and you look at me, you see misery, you don't fight each other, you know, you bond, you know, and that's the, the origination of brotherhood, you know, and uh, because you're both in misery, so you might as well you know, fight it together than fight each other. So, and, you know, the atmosphere, you never knew what was going to happen. And where the, where the Chinese were, they were all over, you know, everywhere. And uh, uh, confusion, confusion like you've never seen in your life. Nobody knew anything. Nobody knew where the line was. You didn't know where these son of a guns were coming from. You didn't see them during the day, but you saw them early in the morning and at dusk. You know, 
It's amazing. Amazing. But what, what can I say? I'm just an average guy. <laughs> a lot of them are peacetime awards. I, I have a silver star uh, from the from the Hagaru uh, perimeter. Uh, uh, I was one of the Marines that helped guide the Army battalion that was uh, ambushed in, into the Pusan or into the Hagaru uh, perimeter. I have a bronze star from uh, my service in uh, Vietnam. Uh, I got a Navy commendation for uh, for organizing that morgue, as I was telling you earlier. I, I, I have a three American Meritorious Service Awards, these are peacetime awards, uh, three Navy Achievement Medals, uh, good conduct medals, <laughs> eight of those. <laughs> they just have to be good to get that. <laughs> and then I have a Vietnamese Cross of Gallantry, uh, with Silver Star, which is equivalent to our Silver Star, and that's about it. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And Purple Heart? And yeah, I got three Purple Hearts. Three Purple Hearts? Yeah. yeah. Wow. We don't talk about those. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, I had a good run. Really had a good run. Yeah. Oh. Well, as and, and, you know, I, my tour as an advisor to the Korean Marine Corps was just fantastic, fantastic. Uh, the treatment I got from the officers uh, that were there, just fantastic. Uh, uh, they, they recognize a good, good person, okay, the Koreans do, you know. They, they know what they know a phony just like that, you know, and, and I always had a good time. Always had a good time. Yeah. I think this would be my last question, unless okay. you have more stories to no, share. No, no, I don't have no <laughs> stories at all. My, I, 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 I enjoyed, you know, plant rice. I, they would sing, you know. What would you definitely want us? younger generations to learn from you, remember? Uh, well, what I, I, one thing I want them to always remember, never give up, never quit. And, you know, be just like a, a rabbit with the carrot dangling in front of you. Just keep going for the, for the gusto. And the Korean, the South Koreans have proven it to me because of what I've seen. I mean, it's amazing. And uh, you got to continue to march. And you got to continue to be positive, never negative. Don't, don't even deal with negative people, uh, liberals, maintain good discipline, but most of all, individual leadership and real leadership and leadership means it's the art of influencing, directing, controlling people towards an assigned goal, maintaining a high degree of efficiency as well as morale. That's what they got to do. And what else can I say? Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Carry on. <laughs> okay. uh, thank All right. you so much. My pleasure.